Now that we've reviewed some foundational information, let's talk about the two areas of development that are focus of this module, physical well-being and social emotional development. We'll begin with the area of physical well-being. Let's focus on health and physical activity at first, and later we'll take an in-depth look at motor development. When we think about health and physical activity, one of the first things that comes to mind is obesity. According to the Centers for Disease Control and, and Prevention, Kentucky has the fifth highest rate of obesity in the nation. This is a problem that impacts our adult caregivers as well as our young children. If you want to learn more about obesity in Kentucky, this website is one to explore. This article link from the American Psychological Association looks at some of the impacts of childhood obesity on brain development. It discusses the impact on cognitive function based on diet and weight. These include an impact on controlling impulses, attention and memory, and the ability to delay gratification. This article points out that diet and weight can impact these skills that promote school readiness. This type of research has made states aware that there is a need to consider healthy children when looking at school readiness. Kentucky has a campaign aimed at reducing childhood obesity that many of you are probably already familiar with. This is called 5210. This focuses on sharing information to help make children and adults in their lives more healthy. This includes a focus on five or more servings of fruit and vegetables each day, two or fewer hours of screen time so children are moving around more and engaging with other things in the environment, at least one hour of physical activity, and zero sweetened high sugar beverages. If you are not familiar with this campaign, then please check out their website included in this slide and on your resource page. This campaign has great free resources to share and ideas for you to talk about evidence-based behaviors that can help reduce obesity. Some of you may have already participated in a fall 2016 library link-up webinar that included information about 5210. If not, then in addition to the website, you may want to take a look at this webinar for information about the partnership for a fit Kentucky. The five of 5210 refers to eating five or more servings of fruit and vegetables a day. Any of us that have our own or work with young children know that it is sometimes hard to get them to try new foods. This is also true for many adults. All of us know folks that will only eat a few types of food. This article talks about the natural fear that we have about trying new things and discusses ways to help children begin to expand their eating experiences. Please take time to read this article and think of some ways to share this information with children and adults that you work with. Helping children broaden their food choices and try new things may help with the five servings a day of fruit and vegetables. And I think we can all understand why we should be physically active and reduce our intake of sweetened beverages to stay healthy. I do want to talk for a minute about the idea of reduced screen time. Spending time watching TV or playing on devices can lead to less physical and social activity. Children are not exploring and learning in play and are missing out on the development of social skills as well as motor and cognitive skills that are developed in active play. The Let's Move Child Care campaign from Nemours Children's Health Systems recommends five healthy goals to prevent obesity, including reducing screen time. You can explore this site to find best practices for implementing these goals for infants and toddlers as well as preschoolers. Arnold Gazelle and John Piaget are two of the leading theorists in motor development. While many of these theories attempt to explain this process, Gazelle's maturational model and Piaget's stages of development perceptual motor model remain relevant even though their research was conducted in the early to mid 20th century. Gazelle's research focused solely on the maturation of the nervous system. He observed children to record the progression of their motor skills, and his work led to the development of motor milestones, which we still use today, including the typical ages for sitting, crawling, walking, and more. He theorized that children will not develop certain skills until the body is physically ready. While Gazelle focused on the physical development of skills, Jean Piaget focused on the process of motor development as a way to learn about the world. Children use motor responses to explore the world and learn about their surroundings. They utilize skills and abilities they were born with, such as looking, sucking, grasping, and listening, 
to learn more about the environment. They build on the motor skills that are more reflexive at birth and develop these into more mature motor skills that will help them gain knowledge. These theories may remind you about two of the NAEYC principles of child development mentioned. Learning and development follow sequences and development and learning result from an interaction of maturation and experience. Take a few minutes to watch this next video on motor development. As you are watching, think about the theories of Gazelle and Piaget. I think you will notice how these work together and the importance of considering maturation, what a child can physically do, along with the motivation to learn more and explore the surroundings. Both are critical in motor development.